I'm so excited to welcome my guest today, Professor Jonah Ratsimbazafe, a true hero for Madagascar's incredible wildlife. He spent more than 30 years protecting endangered lemurs, leading community-driven conservation, and inspiring the next generation of environmental leaders. As a Kiesling Prize finalist and the first African president of the International Primatological Society, Jonah's work is changing the future for both people and wildlife in Madagascar. Welcome to Robin's Nest. Many of us feel a deep bond with animals, from the pets we cherish at home to the endangered species in nature. Join us for lively, informative conversations where together we will build a more humane world. Oh, I'm so excited about this episode of Robin's Nest because I'm with one of my personal heroes in conservation, truly uh, a worldwide leader uh, in not only saving one endangered species, but having an impact and system-wide change in a biodiversity hotspot that we all love. I am so proud to welcome Professor Jonah Ratsimbazafi here on Robin's Nest. Professor Jonah, I'm so thrilled to welcome you. Thank you for being here at Fair Oaks Farm today. My pleasure to be here. This is a beautiful place, Thank Robbie. you. Thank you very much. Well, we're out in nature, and of course, so much of your work is in nature, and you've had such an incredible, incredible journey to save one of the most beautiful species on the planet, the lemur. Do we have lemur fans listening today to Robin's Nest? Because they're precious. Absolutely precious. Can you tell us about your love story for the lemurs? Lemurs, for me, it is part of my life. And uh, I am wondering my mission, what is my mission? Basically, my background is paleontology. I studied fossils. And then when I started, because when I was a kid, my, my parents brought me to visit the zoo in Antananarive, the capital of Madagascar. We saw, I saw lemurs, and uh, I thought that they're like cats or dogs, but they like love banana and jumped fast on trees. It's only until I was a student at the university, I realized that lemurs is unique endemic to Madagascar, just Madagascar. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the, to the field to dig fossils. And we saw lemur, we saw lemurs trapped on, sh on, trapped and died. And I said, I told myself, let me save the living lemurs, but the dead lemurs can wait under the ground until I am ready. And I switch from studying fossils, dead lemurs to living lemurs. That's why I am primatologist. I study lemurs. And I could not stand for their call mm -hmm. asking me help mm -hmm. because they are endangered. Yes. And that is why I became close to them. I love them. And my, the purpose of my life is to save the lemurs. For me, lemurs is not just a beautiful animals. Mm -hmm. It is a world um, patrimony and uh, I told myself, okay, I have to save them before it is too late. Because if the lemurs disappear, the whole Madagascar ecosystem collapse. Right. Because lemurs disperse seeds and lemurs maintain the integrity of the forest. So Madagascar without lemurs is not Madagascar. So I load them, I take care of them, before it is too late. So that is my job now. First of all, your journey to me is so intriguing because what you've described is you're going down one path, paleontology and the study of fossils. And you're finding in this study and in this work, you're finding fossils of lemurs. And that in turn allows you to open your heart and even your ears to hear the call of the lemur to save the remaining ones on on earth. That's such a great inspirational story, and I'm sure young people have to be inspired by, by your work. Uh, I know 
When I started out, it's so interesting. I was fascinated by paleontology too mm -hmm. and did fossil digs and thought in my undergraduate career oh, that was wow. what I was going to study. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we are today saving live animals from yes. the threats of mm -hmm. extinction. So it's interesting how both of our journeys started with the love of fossils and understanding the power of the earth and all. Mm -hmm. Take our listeners to Madagascar and describe the beauty of this gorgeous spot on Earth. I think Madagascar, the Limus choose to come to Madagascar 50 million years ago. In Madagascar, we do not have statute of liberty. We do not have Eiffel Tower. We do not have Pyramid of Egypt. We do not have the Wall of China but we have lemurs. Yes. We have lemurs and the lemurs live now under big threats because more than 90% of the lemurs are on the brink of extinction. 90%? Of the lemurs, nine zero. Why? Because of deforestation? Yes. Hunting? and climate change. Lemurs are like fish. Fish cannot survive outside of the water. Right. And lemurs cannot survive outside of the forest. But more than 90% of the forest in Madagascar, original forest, has been gone. Within the next 30 years, if the current speed of deforestation remains the same, there is no forest left in Madagascar. That means there is no lemurs left. So, so this is urgent. This is really urgent. There is no time, waste time. We have to act now. We have to do our job all together. And conservation is a team effort. I am just devastated by what you've just shared in terms of the threats facing the precious lemurs and the, the percentages that are facing the threats. May I ask you about the obstacles you're facing? You talk about deforestation. Those are big, big entities to fight, right? You're talking about climate change. That is so challenging and so paralyzing for so many of us trying to make an impact. Here we're at Fair Oaks Farm, thousands of miles away from Madagascar. Um, we hear about this and we're we're all frightened. You are up against huge threats, huge obstacles to save these species. What are those specific threats and how are you tackling them? The, the threats of the lemurs are, first of all, deforestation, mm -hmm. habitat loss, mm -hmm. hunting, and climate change. Mm -hmm. And because of that, 90% of our lemurs, which is unique for Madagascar, yes. are on the brink of extinction. Lemurs, like fish, fish cannot survive outside the water. Yes. And lemurs cannot survive outside of the forest. But we only have less than 10% of the original forest left in Madagascar which means that within the next 35 years, if the current speed of deforestation remains the same, there is no forest left in Madagascar. 35 years, that is tomorrow. And that is why we have to act fast, cleverly, mm -hmm. no time. We don't have to waste our time. Yes. And to do the job, we have to work together because conservation is a team effort. Yes. Researchers, zoos yes. and local communities. Yes. We have to work together to escape extinction. And mm -hmm. I am firm, strongly believe, mm -hmm. but we can stop extinction. So the next generation mm -hmm. could still see the lemurs. Is the government of Madagascar helpful? The government tried to do their best and yeah. I helped the government to save the lemurs, but the, the people of Madagascar are very poor. Yes. 
and we have the saying, starving stomach has no ears. Oh. Where can I find the next meal for my children? That's what I want to do. I, my, my, see, my child, children are starving to death. Yes. So yes. I have to find food and they, that's why they cut down the trees to do slash and burn and they do that on and on and on and finally all of the forest is gone. So we work, help the government yes. to save this unique and endemic richness of Madagascar. And as you say, 30 years, it could all be gone in 30 years. And 30 years, that is tomorrow. Yes, it literally is. Yeah. And there would be no more lemurs in their natural wild. We want to save, and that is why we need to work with the zoo. Mm -hmm. Because researchers yes. go into the field yes. to do research to collect critical data and the data that the researchers collect should turn into action. Yes. And the zoo is a safe place to environment for the lemurs. Yes. Because in the zoo you can do research but we don't we cannot do in the wild. And actually today there are many zoo leaders to reintroduce animals back to the world, back to their native habitat. And that is why the working with the zoo is vital, crucial. And uh, I am the uh, uh, Houston Zoo Madagascar program director. Yes. I am a researcher and I work with the zoo and the local community, the local community, because once you bring them back, reintroduce them to the world, the local community is uh, are responsible yes. to save, save, safeguard and take care them of them and take care of them. Mm -hmm. And as again, as I said, the peoples are poor. We support the local community to improve their livelihood. Yes, to educate the children, mm -hmm. to empower them, to yes. empower them. And because I believe, but conservation is really a teamwork. Mm -hmm. Richards finding should go into action and the zoo can do the job and the local community so mm. i can conservation is not mm -hmm. a person concern it's, it is a whole community is a circle of conservation between many people that is why we do work delegate mm -hmm. train the young generation to attend our vision because you may have a vision but you have to achieve the vision. The question is how to work all together because mm -hmm. conservation is a collective task which demands the involvement of all of us. You know what I really appreciate what you just said here in Robin's Nest is the role and the importance of good zoos and aquariums helping to partner with local communities, helping to partner with these biodiversity hotspots that are in such a need of urgent response. And these good zoos and aquariums like the Houston Zoo and the great people of Houston that are supporting the Houston Zoo, you were actually helping to save lemurs uh, with Professor Jonah. Isn't that incredible? So that should make you feel really, really proud of visiting a good zoo and aquarium and allowing a percentage of your dollars that go to those tickets uh, to help fund conservation. You know, I, I love that. And what you're doing is you're trying to create these catalyst of changes on the ground with communities who face poverty, they pay, face threats to their livelihood, and all of that's impacting the survivability chances for the lemurs. So I must tell you, I'm so proud of your work, but yeah. I'm going to pivot quickly because you are here in, in, uh, in our beautiful farm. We're celebrating the Kiesling Prize of which you're a finalist. What does it mean to be a Kiesling Prize finalist to you? Oh, I think the Kiesling Prize will allow me to transform for me to f lead the fight against extinction. Yes. I believe, but with the Kisling Prize, I can train the young generation mm -hmm. to make the difference. 
this is incredible opportunity. So this is, I'm the finalist, but this is a nation, a winning. So mm. I can speak on behalf of the Malagasy people. Yes. Thanks to the Kisling Prize. You, your help. Because for us, it's for the humanity. Lemurs is not just a beautiful animal, beautiful creature. For me, it is a therapy. Yes. I believe on what we call lemurotherapy. If I am stressed, if people are stressed, go and see the lemurs. Yes, yes, absolutely. And your stress is gone. So I believe, but with the Kislin Price, we can maintain the world therapy and the lemurs. That's Thank beautiful. you so much. Oh, well, on Thank behalf so of Global Humane Society, which is the, uh, the, uh, the group that hosts the International uh, Kiesling Prize for Species Conservation, we are honored that you are a finalist and that you're doing this very important work. And I also love the fact that you are inspiring the next generation of conservationists to take on that heavy mantle of responsibility to protect the precious lemur. I also want to give a big shout out to the Houston Zoo. Thank you for what you do to support Professor Jonah's work. I'm so honored that you are here today and congratulations on being a Thank finalist you very much. for again the 2025 Kiesling Prize. You Robin and to your family, to the Kiesling family, because um, I don't find the word strong enough, good enough mm -hmm. to thank you. But trust me, together, you'll definitely make the difference before it is too late. I keep always saying, before my eyes will close forever, I want to see the change. I want to see the change, and the change will happen. And we will turn our yeah. vision into action. And I believe on that. We can do the difference all together. I just want to repeat what he said. Before my eyes close forever, I want to see the change. Those are such inspirational words, and they've touched my heart. And I'm sure they've touched everyone listening today to Robin's Nest. Professor Jonah, continue to lead the good fight. We're right here fighting with you. Thank you so much for being in this episode of Robin's Nest. Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode of Robin's Nest. Please like, subscribe, and follow. And thanks for all you do to build a more humane world.